Brian, uh, welcome to the web. Welcome back to the webinar series, and the floor is yours, my friend. Thank you, Rick. I appreciate it. Um, I hope everybody who went to CEDIA last week had a, a good time and is back and uh, recovering. Um, hopefully, you had an opportunity to stop by the uh, Snap booth and see some of the Dragonfly screens that were up. Um, you know, I, I'm very excited to be the product manager for Dragonfly. Um, I, I really look at it when I took over here within the last six months as this is an industry's hidden gem. I think this is an opportunity for um, not only the, the dealers to make uh, additional margin, but also to uh, make the product or to, to understand that this product is, uh, is high quality, easy to assemble and available uh, uh, quick to ship. So let's, um, let's spend a little time here talking about screens and Dragonfly. So I'm gonna start off with why Dragonfly, um, you know, what makes Dragonfly stand out or, or why should you be considering Dragonfly in, in every uh, theater purchase that you're uh, making. The different form factors that are offered, I'm uh, gonna dive a little bit into the materials, different types of screen materials. Got to touch on a product that is um, fairly new. Um, I don't know that everybody is aware of it. It, it launched, uh, I think, in the last year. Uh, but I'm going to dive into that a little bit, and then just going to show some quick comparisons of, um, you know, dealer margins and how you can make additional money with Dragonfly. So, first of all, you know, Dragonfly has been around with Snap AB for a long time, but I think it's one of the uh, product lines that. Um, because there's so many for the salespeople and the product people to talk about, doesn't get talked about as, as much as it really should. Um, there's a wide range of product offering, um, and we'll dive into that a little bit more. These products are in, in stock, ready to ship next day, or a lot of times they're also um, available for local pickup. So, um, and that's a big deal. As you know, uh, things change, uh, schedules change, things like that, and having to wait three weeks or, or longer for a uh, a screen to show up is generally not going to fit into uh, fit into plans very well. Um, the design of these is is specifically made not only to look good with a, a single rail construction uh, on the bottom and the top and the sides, uh, but it's also um, makes it easier to assemble. The whole process is set up so that you can be in and out with assembly of the product, um, and in the end, your customer ends up with a, a very nice looking product. Material wise, you know, we'll talk a little about pricing, but Material-wise, uh, all these materials are high-quality materials. Uh, Snap does a lot of testing up front um, and continued testing to make sure that our materials and uh, processes are well-controlled. And um, I would put these the quality of the materials up with, with any other in the industry. So let's talk a little bit about form factors. So three most popular form factors fixed, um, which allows you to obviously you know, put the screen up on the wall, uh, set the projector in place, and no more work is, is needed. It uh, has a nice look to it, um, and it's uh, multi-purpose. There's motorized versions. Motorized versions, uh, both for commercial and for home, allows you to, uh, you can do a tab tensioning or a non-tab -tab tensioning. Uh, motors are extremely quiet and fast, and so, um, you know, we've received very good feedback on these. And then finally, the, the recessed versions for those customers that you know, want everything to disappear. Um, you know, it comes already assembled in the box, just uh, just needs to be installed. Um, the different materials are available in each of these. So any, any materials when we launch, uh, new materials will be available in fixed, motorized, and recessed. And again, the motorized is a, a tab tensioning and a non-tab tensioning, just depending on um, you know, what price point your customer is looking at and, and what type of uh, need they have. So I'm gonna dive a little bit now into some of the materials. Um, and we have uh, samples available of all the materials. So if you ever get in a situation where your customer wants to see the um, a sample of the material to look at the quality or see how it looks in the, in the light, things like that, um, our customer service is able to ship out samples. that are generally like an eight by 10 piece of any of the materials. So the first one we'll talk about today is the matte white. Matte white is probably the, uh, the best value option, I'll say. Um, it's best for 1080p, it's gonna be low cost. Um, it's an elegant design. Um, it's, it's perfect for office and or home, and it's the kind of the most basic screen. Now we do have a high quality um, matte white material with a, um, a unique micro diamond pattern that really helps uh, stand out with the 1080p products. Um, and again, like I mentioned earlier, these are available in fixed, motorized, and recessed. The next step up is, is your high contrast. Um, screens. Your high contrast, again, are, are 1080p systems, tried and true. Um, 
but they're a little bit they have a little bit better gain and so they're available um to help prevent the washout of the projection and, and uh, more well-lit well rooms as well as uh, enhancing the contrast ratio and providing deeper blacks. Um, these screens are available in sizes up to 160 inch and again are, are in our inventory um, and, and really they really stand out when you have those compared to uh, some of the other products on the market and you're you're looking at a 1080p projector they stand out. Next one I want to talk about a little bit is the ultra white. So ultra white is our, our brightest film screen. Uh, it's suited for a variety of applications. Um, the, it, it really invigorates the bright whites um, and provides that optimum color contrast that uh, comes from the projector. And as we know, it's, it's really about the quality of the projector and the type of projector and how it's programmed. Uh, but the screen does well at enhancing that. Um, this is a 4K type of material. Uh, so it's really, really there to optimize those 4K projectors that are out there. Um, it's smooth, so when, when you see it, the human eye looks at the uh, visible textures, um, can really see the, the resolutions and things. And again, this is a material that has been uh, continuously improved upon. Now this is, um, this would be from a 4K standpoint, this would be the probably the best low cost option on the market. Um, and this is available in screen sizes up to 145 inches. Now the next one, we start getting into some in more innovative materials. So Ultra Acousta Weave um, really allows you to set the speaker system up the way you want to, put speakers behind the product, um, let that sound flow through, but at the same time, um, you know, not take away from the, uh, the image. So we have a finely woven fabric. Um, it's a special material. It's uh, woven with a, what's called a closed pitch to eliminate um, image artifacts um, and other, other things that you know, are typical in, in some of these screens. Uh, but at the same time, allow that professional audio to come through. So this obviously is our best sound performance screen um, and, and a great option for 4K HD as well. Um, again, it's available in a fixed version, uh, up to 160 inches, a motorized and a recessed version. So the, the newer material, and I think one that's, uh, those of you that the sell a lot of screens are seeing is, is more and more popular in the market today, is uh, what's called ambient light rejecting, ALR. And this type of material is really meant for a room that um, you know, doesn't have total darkness. Um, you still want that quality picture uh, with the ambient light. You know, the home theaters, a lot of times these days, uh, people wanna repurpose them as, as multimedia rooms and multi-use. Um, so this is a perfect product to, to allow customers to do that, use that room for uh, multiple purposes, not have to worry about you know getting it to pitch black, but still have a screen that really, um, really shows. So a lot of work was done by the uh, the Dragonfly engineering team here to really make sure that this was a, a strong quality uh, way of re rejecting that ambient light um, without giving up on, on uh, performance and and the ability for um, the ability for uh, um, you know a good quality picture. So um, I'll dive into it a little bit, but lenticular screen technology is is kind of what goes into the screen and it's kind of a unique uh, reflection system or properties within the fabric um, it's they're like micro cylinder tiny micro cylinders uh, focused and they focus the projected light into horizontal beams so basically less light is is allowed to get in and it, it really focuses on the uh, the projector uh, light coming from the projector and getting those black contrast levels and the white levels um, to the levels that that are uh, you know 4K worthy. A little bit more, I mentioned the black lenticular lens technology. Um, it's microscopic. It's it's obviously not something you can easily see, uh, but it does have a strong picture. If anybody was at the uh, CDA show, uh, we were showing the ALR screen in both the fixed version and the um, uh, motorized version, and it really really looked great. I mean there was we had several people walk up and thought it was a, a large screen TV. Um, so that's kind of the, the ultimate in compliments. Now the, the construction of this is also, it's, it's seven layers of a whisper thin material. And so that not only makes it um, a strong quality, uh, but also allows it to withstand the brightest of lights and hold up under those conditions while still giving a, a good quality picture. Um, one of the things that, that we're most excited about is the thin bezels fixed screen. So the thin bezel fixed screen, again, has the 
uh, upper and lower uh, four sides basically are one piece, so you don't you don't have those unsightly lines. But it's also very thin, so you have seven millimeters. Um, the the it's still outlined in felt, uh, which helps to to draw in the picture properly. Um, it's easy to assemble. It's available in a 92, 100, a 110, and a 120 currently. Um, and it's it's the popular ALR that we just talked about. Um, it's available in that in inventory as well as the ultra acoustic weave uh, and the ultra white material. So this has probably been one of the uh, the bigger movers we've seen here recently. And and like I said, we showed it at CDA last week, and it was extremely popular. What I want to do is just kind of take a couple minutes now to compare. I mean. I think everybody here knows that you know SI is one of the top brands in the market, um, and it's a good product. But I, I, um, I guess I challenge everyone on the phone: is is you purchase a, a projector and a screen from local or from Snap, um, always take a look at the Dragonfly because I think when you look at the Dragonfly, you're going to find from a quality standpoint, uh, the product is equal to anybody else in the market, and from a availability standpoint, you're going to find the best availability. But when you really look down deeper and you look at what's the opportunity for you uh, to make a little bit extra margin on some of the projects, um, I think you're going to find it with Dragonfly. So here's just a, a, a one example, a 4K 120-inch ultra-white screens. Um, when you look at MSRP, Dragonfly is slightly higher, um, but that allows you to market a, a higher-end screen. When you look at your cost, it's actually lower. So from a, a dealer margin perspective, you're almost uh, you're almost doubling your margin on this type of screen. So it's a 22% lower cost and 116% more margin for you. Um, definitely worth the look at when you uh, when you spec any of these screens in. Looking at your thin bezel ALR screen, 120 inch, which is one of the more popular in the market today. Um, again, MSRPs are very similar. Dealer cost is um, less, and so from your perspective, you put about 25% more margin. Uh, into your pocket. So again, I think, you know, please try Dragonfly if you haven't. Um, I think it, you're going to find out it's not it's not only easy to assemble, available ready, but it's also an opportunity to put some extra money in your pocket. And these days we all uh, we all want to do that. So Rick, I know I, I went through that kind of quick. Um, you know, it's to me, it's a pretty basic offering as far as we have the, you know, all the proper materials. We have the, the popular sizes as well as the uh, popular form factors. Uh, they're all in inventory, like I said, both locally uh, in most instances, as well as within the Snap Store. And I think the um, you know the, the pricing and the value uh, kind of sells itself. All right, yeah. If you'd like, we can back up a few steps and drill down on some topics. So um, let me see. I don't have any I don't have any questions lit up right now, but let's talk about packages. So I know that uh, through the Snap AV store, uh, we've got the Ben Q projector line, and then the, in, then out in the local distributors, we've got various lines like here at All Net. We've got Sony, JVC, and Vivitech as well, and some of our other uh, sister companies have uh, other offerings. So we do package these pretty often with projectors, and and I'll say that we don't necessarily follow the um, the Snap AV or the Dragonfly storyline of uh, this is a 1080 screen and this is a 4k screen so what what are the trade-offs when you decide to put let's say like a um an entry-level 4k projector like say the vivitech 2229 or, or even like a native three chip projector like the new uh jvc dila or the sony sxrd um on a screen that's maybe a lower price point that is optimized for 1080 versus uh, packaging it at a little bit higher package price point with the um, the ultra white material. Sure, no great what question. The, what are those? What would those trade offs be? Yeah, so I think I think you're you know, and again, it depends a little bit on the the uh, lighting and size of the room, things like that. But uh, obviously, your your trade offs are going to be quality of the image, um, and it may depend. It depends on what your customer is using it for. If they're going to watch high quality movies and they have that eye for um, you know, high resolution and things like that. You definitely want to go with the the higher version. If they're gaming and they're looking for a, a value price, um, and they want to have that projector screen set up, then you know you can you can trade off. You can use the uh, the lower end screens. So it really comes down to what your customer usage is, what your customer's usage is, what your um, your budget is as far as your customer goes, um, and then also the application.
Okay, and then obviously with the um, the ultimate linearity of the screen being uh, available on the ultra white products, so that's going to be mostly visible as you get closer to the screen or as you have a larger screen that that uh, takes up more of your viewing angle. Correct. Correct. So I think that's a great point. You know, again, it comes back to um, you know how's your customer going to use it? How far back are they going to be? Where they're positioned? Things like that. I think as you're, as you're looking for more questions and stuff too, I think one of the trends that we're looking at closely is we're seeing more and more gaming going on. Um, you know, I, I have an 11 year old son and he loves to play uh, video games and he loves to have his friends over. And so the ability for him to have the space where his friends can come over, I know where he is um, and they can play games on, on whether it's the big screen or whether it's a projection screen or projector. Um, it's definitely becoming more and more of a popular trend and uh, something I think is going to continue to grow. Okay. So speaking of viewing angles, do we want to dive into a little bit of uh, projection system design and talk about the viewing angles from primary seating position? Um, yeah. I mean, I, to be honest, so, I, I – go ahead. I've got, so you know, I worked for, I was with CEDIA for a while. I was part of the training department at CEDIA. So the SIMPTI is 30 degrees viewing angle from primary seating. And then the THX recommendation is 45, which is ginormous. And that's uh, image width. And it's image width at the primary um, um, aspect ratio, which our screens are predominantly 16 by 9 or 16 by 10 aspect ratio. Um, and obviously with commercial, you know, this is not something that uh, SIMPTI or THX would be involved in the recommendations on viewing angles so it would be more about visual acuity and things like that for for um, commercial presentations and then you're talking about um, uh, chip resolution versus image size for more for commercial versus at, um, viewing angle for residential for home theater use but yeah 45 degrees is the recommendation from uh, THX and that is that makes for some enormous screens, which requires some enormous light output, but the wow factor is insane. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. The other thing that, you know, those of us that were at CDA last week, one of the trends we saw as we walked around more and more is the short throw projectors. And I think it depends on who you talk to uh, as far as how popular that's going to become and how quickly, uh, but we're definitely aware of that. And, and one of the things that uh, you know, and not many people do this, but I see, I do see some mistakes where somebody will take an ALR screen and uh, attach it to a, a, throw, a short throw projector, and that doesn't work. You end up with a very blurry image, and the reason being is the ALR is actually rejecting some of the light of the re, of the short throw projector. So there's specific screens for short throw. Um, there's none of those in the Dragonfly line today, but it is definitely something we're working on um, and continuing to develop. Another note on short throw is that short throw doesn't like anything that's not fixed and perfectly taut. Um, we had that issue at a, a commercial location here in Michigan. It was actually a big flagship bar in Ann Arbor, a few blocks away from the University of Michigan, Ann Arbor. And um, they had a ultra short throw projector and they wanted the screen to be recessed so that they could drop it down during game day and then recess it. It was a, kind of a restaurant that had also a, a bar side and we didn't necessarily want it to be um, down all the time because we obviously recommended a fixed screen and the integrator moved forward and the, the the end result was fine it was acceptable but there was it wasn't quite as sharp as we had it on other systems elsewhere and I probably shouldn't say this too much because I just kind of tipped my hand as to who the which restaurant it was but um when we went back to it, we talked to the, the video manufacturer who produced the projector and they said, you know, to give us more details on your screen and how's your screen mounted and, you know, is this on a partition or something that's where it's not necessarily very rigid. And we're like, no, it's not on a partition. It's a tab tension screen. He's like, oh, it's, it's a drop down screen. It's not a, it's a motorized screen. We're like, yeah, it's a motorized screen. He's like, yeah, you don't want that at all. He's like, ideally you want that to be a fixed rigid uh, projection surface because the light angle is coming at such a uh, such a sharp angle that if there's any variance whatsoever, it's 
it's going to be reflected and it's going to look kind of like if you shine a mag light against the wall if you shine it straight you have a perfect circle if you shine it upward you have like an ellipse it looks like an egg so he's like you know there's there's a specific optics that counteract for that effect to make that egg back into a circle so that those pixels will all be pixel shaped and not egg shaped so he's like imagine that you know you've got <laughs> you know from three feet away you're a quasi egg seven feet away you're at round and nine feet away you're upside down quasi egg <laughs> he's like you know your your image is not ideal so and it's just because of like a you know a half of a millimeter of difference versus you know what a fixed screen would be yeah, isn't that amazing yeah. amazing what the, uh, the light and the reflection can do from there and we've kind of we've gotten away from really high level video system design as an industry um 20 years ago we had to 23 20 years ago we were working with crt projectors where everything had to be aligned immaculately or it didn't work um luckily our resolutions were fairly low back then so we had a little bit of a uh, gray area to play with no pun intended but i think that we kind of got lazy and we got spoiled by the point and shoot and i kind of equate projection technology to to film camera technology you know in the 70s and 80s when we had these you know these big slr cameras you know you had to know how to set your aperture you had to know how to set your you know all of your settings on your camera manually zoom manually focus and then all these all-in-ones came out you know and my first camera i took the photography class was like a minolta all-in-one and the teacher looked at me he's like i can't teach you anything on that because it does everything for you so we kind of we are in the same thing with projectors you point them in you shoot them and they're all aligned and they're perfect and you know if you get the throw ratio within the spec and the, you know you can get the thing zoomed and focused and get the light off the screen you can have a usable pretty significantly high level image with within you know 20 minutes of plugging the thing in versus in the old days it would take four hours to get it even close and then you got to calibrate it <laughs> i know exactly what you're saying yeah. you know i think we're, we're definitely at a um a crossroads right now a good crossroads um, as you know, I have uh, Sunbright, so I have outdoor video as well. And sure. as we look at, you know, how people entertain themselves and, and where things go, I think we've got a crossroads of, do you put a TV indoors? Do you put a TV outdoors? Do you put a short throw projector and a screen? You know, what works? And then, you know, five years down the road, you you know, you have the, uh, the LG, LG rollable screen. So it's like, how does this all come out uh, in the, you know, in the future? Um, so I think we're we're definitely there's many t exciting times ahead for both screens and and video monitors. Um, it'll be interesting to see what happens over the next couple of years. But I think with sure. the Control Four integration, um, obviously that puts us in a very exciting situation of being able to really build out that consumer experience, whether it's indoors or outdoors, you know, and viewing that video. All right. So, do we want to uh, touch on really quickly the um, some of the pros and cons of large video display, a large flat panel versus doing projection? Sure, sure. We, you know, I can, I can, you know, give you my thoughts on it anyway. So, I mean, obviously, from a um, setup standpoint, a large video screen is much harder to install and set up. It's going to be much more expensive. Um, you know, from a resolution standpoint, uh, it has its advantages. But if you look at, you know, again, at CDA, you look at some of those short throw projectors, I think uh, I saw one Epson was showing, it, it was amazing. Um, so I think, you know, they're starting to cross those those roads as well. Um, so, I, you know, I, I kind of see the future of short throw, whether it's rear projection or front projection, um, you know, taking away some of the, uh, the larger video formats for sure. Yeah, definitely. I think the primary factor right now is how much ambient light we're dealing with and then whether or not it's worth it to spec ALR or whether it's time to move straight to a, a fixed flat panel. One of the other big challenges is can you get, so right now we sell a lot of 85 inch panels and 10 years ago that was definitely a projection sale. Mm -hmm. And But one of the other challenges is there are a lot of rooms where you can't physically get that panel up or up or down a staircase or in or out of the only door that leads to that part of the home. And it's easy to take a dragonfly box in that house and manipulate it up that staircase. And then the projector, you know, it's, it's you know, the size of like three large pizzas. So, mm -hmm. you know, three large pizza boxes stacked on top of each other and I can get the projector up there. No problem. If I can get speakers in that room and, a, and an AV receiver in that room, I can get the projector in that room. 
Yep. You know, that doesn't necessarily mean you can get the 85 inch TV, much less like the 98s or the really, you know, the, the significantly uh, large screens. And then even if I do, you know, like you said, that's that's not the that's not the most cost um, cost effective way of getting that high resolution, high performance image in that room. And um, the other disadvantage is I've got at that point I've got a hard screen. So I mean we talked a little bit about ALR or not ALR, I'm sorry, um, acoustically transparent screens and the design element, the design um, goal of having the at least the center channel, if not the left and right, also behind the screen, depending upon you know the width of the screen, whether or not it's going to be um, uh, whether or not the width is going to encompass the uh, the positions of the left and the the right speakers as well to the seating positions. So, you know, you can't do that with uh, television. The television and the the speaker has to be above or below. We also have to worry about you know getting power and then dealing with heat and all that all that kind of stuff versus projectors. You know, we can put them away, put them in a projection room or just get them you know, it's out of the way, period. No, and I think the room design. Yeah, no, I think that's an excellent point on the on the audio and the quality of the audio and the, and the way you're able to design the room. Um, you know, I also think back to I have three kids and three pets and I'd much rather when they're throwing stuff around, horsing around, that they uh, throw a baseball or something into a screen versus a, a you know, twenty or $30,000 LCD. So that's the other thing I always think about when I think about large TVs. Yeah, we used to use the example of a Wii remote, but I think that might be a dated example now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the Wii remotes cost a lot of people a lot of TVs, and back then TVs were expensive. The VR headset now probably is. Uh... Yeah, you're, oh, you know what? You're right, because everyone's looking at VR, and they're not looking at real the room. They're actually looking at the VR headset, and they just walk into the thing or punch mm -hmm. it or whatever. Yep. Yeah. All right. Well, so if we have any if we have any questions, please type them in the chat. We're happy to address them. Yeah, and, and, um, and any comments we might have from the audience as well of guys. I mean, you know, Snap AV. Those of you again that were at CD and saw the keynote from John. I mean, we're here to make it easier for dealers. We're about the dealers. We're about making the installation easier, making your job easier, helping you sell. So if there's things product-wise or things that um, sales-wise that we can help. You know, again, if it's not necessarily a question, but even comments, uh, we, we love to get that input as well. All right. So we do have a few questions here. Let me pull this up. Um, Robert asks, what about the future 8K projectors and screen properties? Um, is the ultra white product suited for 8K today or are we looking for an even smoother material to come for the future? Yeah, so I think that's that's a great question. And I think is, you know, 8K on the monitors obviously is, is out in the market and uh, becoming I don't want to say more popular, but it's becoming more talked about. Um, you know, the 8K projectors and screens to make that, they're definitely going to change. Um, you know, it's one of those things that the nice thing is we have R&D teams that are, you know, closely watching that, working with materials and, and understanding that. And, you know, nothing's on the on the horizon right now for 8K screens, but I do know that there will be uh, there will be changes. And, and obviously, as, as content is actually created in 8k and i think it's the 20 is it 2020 or 2022 olympics in tokyo is going to be one of the first uh, major sports broadcast in 8k um everybody's going to be looking more and more at the you know the, not only the screens but also the projectors and um, the uh, projection screens to really show the quality of that video so i think it's a good point i think it's one that you know at some point where does a rollable lcd and an L and a, a fixed screen you know, we're, or a projection screen cross, um, but there's, yeah, there, there's lots of excitement ahead as far as technology goes in this area. Okay, definitely. And I would say for anyone considering, uh, you know, a projector upgrade for the future for their client, try to make sure you get the best possible screen that you can put in there so that you're not upgrading both pieces of a two-piece system um, in the future. So it's easier to spec in the, you know, the, the flagship material today and then talk to them about a projector upgrade in four years than it is to talk to them about, you know, selling them a, um, a 1080 optimized material today and then talking to them about a complete revamp of the entire room in four years. It's easier to swap the, screen, the projector out. No, that's a great point. Um, yeah. I always, I'm always a fan of selling the best screen you can because you, you know that that's not the last projector that screen is going to be resolving. Yep. 
Yeah, they definitely have a better life. Okay. Um, we got a question from Ken. What are included for mounting brackets on your fixed screens? Uh, can you review the mounting uh, the the mounting procedures? Um, you know, I, I I'm not as close to each of the brackets and the mountings. Uh, I do know that on the SNAP website, there are the um, the literature and the install guides are there. Um, so you know, that's probably the best reference. I'll be more than happy offline to. Uh, send more information or, or, you know, get somebody that's uh, involved in designing those and stuff. But I, I'm not as familiar with the uh, mounting brackets, unfortunately. I can speak to it a little bit because we've got uh, one of the thin bezels up in our training room here. Um, so when we put that up, um, it hangs like a traditional screen. It's got little kind of like Z clips that um, that ride into the um, extrusion. And then you snap the screen in the extrusion and it has kind of little tiny spring and they're on these little tiny hooks um, and you you get a little hook tool and you basically do them in a sequence and it recommends a sequence right in the manual to help make the material as taut as possible so you kind of just go around once and you go around again and it, it, it just kind of makes sure it pulls any um, imperfections out of the screen and then what we did is we had it flat on across two tables and then we flipped it up upright and kind of inspected it we had to flip it back down and kind of tug and re-tug a couple of different spots, but it took maybe 20 minutes to get that screen absolutely perfect and hung after we started assembling it. So I can share that. That's just personal experience I have. I want to say it's a 120, 16 by nine. Um, and Brian, did you send us uh, an ALR? I think you sent us an ALR, right? For our room? Yes. Yep, I believe so. Yeah. And okay. I think, you know, again, to the, the kind of description you were talking about with the mounting a little bit, you know, the nice thing about the screens is the tools for attaching this, there's a nice little tool and in, in clothes for attaching the springs. White gloves are there so that, you know, you're leaving the customer with a very nice looking screen. Yeah, and unlike other companies, um, our thin bezel still has felt on it. So it's still a light absorbing uh, sure. material versus there's another screen, well, a couple other screen manufacturers that have a thin frame, but the thin frame is basically anodized aluminum, and it'll it'll light up when you hit it with uh, a little bit of overspray. So it, I think ours is better. I think it's a better look. I like it a lot. Yep. Uh, okay. I've, I've heard that before. Um, this, is a, this is a unique one for me. What would you recommend for an installation on the aft deck of a yacht? <laughs> Brian, I'm going to let you tackle that one. Yeah. Oh, so that's funny. So I just was, I was at Cedia and we have one of our, uh, one of our technicians and, and test engineers. He, um, he is, uh, he, on the side, he does installs and stuff. And he just showed me some pictures he did recently with uh, a yacht install. And he had actually used, he used a, I'm trying to remember what he showed me. He used a, um, a fixed screen but it was it had like a motorized uh, mount up and down in it. So it was fixed screen, ALR obviously, because of the atmosphere there. Um, he had a short throw projector and he had replaced, I think he placed it in the back. So it was it was short throw showing into the, um, uh, in the backside. So obviously it wasn't our screen on that particular one because we don't have the short throw screens, but um, ALR definitely um, for that environment. Um, you know, it kind of depends on your space. I wouldn't think that a 120 inch fixed screen is going to be, uh, you know, as usable as maybe a motorized um, is probably your better bet at that point so that it's, you know, not blocking the rest of the, the boat. Oh, that's a really unique application. All right. <clears throat> Our next question comes from Michael. He's here at our market. Pardon me. Okay. So Michael is asking, any suggestions for masking options, or are there any masking options uh, in the pipeline for a Dragonfly? Uh, when you say masking options, what, I guess, what exactly? Are the multi referring? multiple aspect ratios where the light absorbing material can uh, frame out a 235 or a 185 image. Gotcha, gotcha. Um, so the funny thing is, is um, Dragonfly had a 235 option um, years ago, and it wasn't very popular and so it was dropped um, and now that seems to be one that's requested more than not so um, it's not anything that I can tell you you know within the next years and in, in the um, in the pipeline you know we kind of look and say okay you know what what do we put in stock that's going to be the 80 20 kind of rule 
Um, but I, I have heard that more and more. And I think, you know, as you continue to get those needs in the market, feed those through back to your, uh, your local, your local location or your, uh, your salesperson, because what they do is they have a system um, where they can feed that directly to us. So as we get more and more requests that says, Hey, you know, two, 235 uh, is important, or this is, is important in screens. Um, that input is key to us and how we decide to develop new products. Perfect. And I like your answer too about the 80, 20 rule, because I think that, you know, we've all got uh, catalogs or binders on our desk, but those of us who are old enough to still have binders from vendors, but with uh, vendors who will make just about anything custom, custom. But what well, I think what we're hitting here is the, uh, the, the eighty percent of the applications with products that are at really sharp price points, and like you said earlier, the stock levels. So you know, in, in a past lifetime of mine, I repped one of the larger screen manufacturers, and our claim to fame was that our primary competitor. And this was back when there was three primary screen manufacturers. Our primary competitor was on a sixteen-week lead time, and we could we could reduce that to four weeks lead time. And now we're talking about twenty-four to forty-eight hours lead time for a lot of our dragonfly screens. It totally blows my mind. Exactly, and and the quality levels again, you know, both from a projection and from a material standpoint, are are equal. So it's uh, yeah, it's like I said, it's it's really the hidden gem um, in my mind when I took it over and started looking at you know what type of products we had, uh, the price points we had in the market. I'm like, wow, you know, we should be um, we should be pairing these with every projector that goes out the door or so. Yeah. Um, so Robert's asking a follow-up question about 235, about um, using Panamorph lenses. So there isn't necessarily a 235 option, Robert. So um, the Panamorph really wouldn't do much on the current projector, current screens, other than make it letterbox, which it could already display. Um, you could do it, but then you'd have to have a, some sort of a um, lens shift on the projector to readjust the image width in order to make it a constant um, constant width system. All right, hold on. Uh, Ken is asking about ALR. Any chances we're going to have an ALR that can do acoustic weave, uh, acoustically transparent properties? Yeah, so great question. So that is something we um, are asking for. Uh, I think there's some opportunity there um, to kind of start combining some of the materials so you get that. Um, again, you know, the traditional home theater, um, while it still has its place, uh, people want to use it as more of a multi-purpose room. Um, so having ambient light uh, while also maintaining the, the, uh, the audio quality uh, is very important. So again, I don't, can't really set a time frame on it, but it is definitely something we're working on. All right, Ken had an additional question too. Um, since you're also the product manager for the Sunbright product, this I guess this carries <laughs> over and will definitely be yours. Um, any chance for outdoor projection screens from Dragonfly? Yeah, so uh, again, that's an area that um, I think is going to continue to grow. Um, it, it definitely is an area we're looking at. Um, you know, and I, I'm sorry, I'd, I'd love to say, hey, next month we're going to have that. Uh, but when we look at the outdoor, we're, we're very much looking at the outdoor experience and the indoor experience. So the outdoor experience is TV and projections and screens. Um, and, and we're looking at, you know, how do we best fill those needs, uh, whether it's through uh, third party products or through um, relationships or product development. So I, I say, yes, you know, there's definitely uh, something coming down the road as far as outdoor projection. Um, I just you know don't have an answer as to how quickly, but I, I think it is definitely a, a growing area. Nice. Okay. Thank you. All right. I think that's it for the questions we've got on the, on the tab so far. If you have any questions, please type them into the questions tab or the chat tab, and we will uh, we'll address them right now. And then we can uh, we can cut this a little early so our friends on the West Coast can uh, be ready for their lunch hour. <laughs> <laughs> Those of us out east have just gotten done. So. Um, all right. Anything, any uh, tips or tricks or tidbits or sneak peeks or anything that was shown at Cedia that we can discuss while we're, while we're on yeah. the line here? Yeah. I mean, I think, you know, the, the, um, the, there was a lot of new speakers shown and I know, you know this isn't a speaker webinar, but um, the new signature series and the new 
um, built-in uh, products that they're working on that side. And again, the, the nice thing about you know working at Snap is I sit right next to the to Matt, who's the uh, audio guy. And so we have those conversations about how do we continue to grow the end user's experience and make it that seamless experience of you know watching TV, playing video games, feeling like they're immersed in that. Um, and how do we make those work well together for uh, the dealers? And I think there was a lot of conversation at Cedia last week with the uh, you know our Control 4 uh, brothers now of, hey, how do we continue to integrate control into that as well? So I'm really excited for you know Cedia next year because I think there will be uh, a lot more opportunity for immersive uh, experiences and things like that in both the you know the indoor theater or multi media room, however you want to call it, as well as the outdoor experience. So. Nice. Okay. So we do have a couple other questions popped up here. Um, <clears throat> they're involving distances and projection angles. So with ALR, is there a distance minimum from the projector for ALR? And also, are there are there specific um, projection angle recommendations for the um, for the projector? If the if the projector has like a significant lens shift, is that something we still don't want to use because we want to get the projector in a specific angle relative to the screen relative to the to the viewing audience? So I, I could answer part of that. Um, yes, there is a distance. There's a minimum and, and maximum recommended distance. And, and sh it's funny how, you know, when you look at short throw, if you jump on uh, the web and you type in short throw, you sometimes get very inexpensive projectors that are classified as short throw, but they're not the professional short throw. Um, I, I'm not, a, I, I don't have memorized the different lengths and things. Uh, I know um, Sony has a, a really good website, um, so I would suggest go to their website from a projector standpoint, and you can get a lot of that information um, because they're really, you know, they're they're the ones setting the standards, and they're the guys that we work with as we develop our materials. Okay, Sony perfect. and other others. I didn't mean just Sony, but JVC. And sure. Epson. And we distribute Sony here, so I can. The website is just called SonyPremiumHome.com, and that's the um, the high-end integrators website for Sony. And they have a laser short throw, and uh, that thing is pretty awesome. But it does require that very that kind of very specific screen. Um, it doesn't work with the traditional ALR. They want the short throw version of the ALR. Correct, which which we know is not unfortunately yet available in Dragonfly, but coming. Yeah, we've um, we we still have a relationship with another vendor that we use in that application. Or like I said earlier, we go to the fixed uh, ultra white. Which ultra white looks looks fantastic with that projector, um, but it obviously doesn't have ALR characteristics. Yeah, and 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 you know having relationships with others is is important. I think again that goes back to the mantra of Snap. We want to provide our dealers with choice, um, and so as the product slash category manager, you know I'm aware of the other relationships, and and I encourage them because we want to provide that choice to the dealer and, and make sure that you know they have the the opportunity to get the best products there locally um, to make their customers happy. Certainly. Okay, so one more question about distances, and this is uh, uh, related to the topic that you just brought up about speakers. So when we're using the AcoustaWeave product, in the past, there was a minimum distance for the speaker relative to the surface of the screen material to avoid coupling. This was predominantly if you put subwoofers or any sort of large, uh, large drivers behind the screen. And it was really more from the microperf era before we had the woven materials, or I, when I say we, I mean before the industry had woven materials. When we had microperf, there was only so much energy that was going to get out through that material because it was predominantly like a, you know, it was like a vinyl material that was perforated, and there was only so much open surface area. Otherwise, the drivers would couple and the drivers would move the screen material. What are the design? recommendations today for um, acoustic wave materials can you hang a woven screen directly over in wall speakers yes yeah, so that's a good question so i know that as the materials have gotten better and better um you know the requirements are, are less and less i i don't know the exact answer to that it's something that um i can talk to um i, I can go back and talk to our technical people and if, if you want to capture who that was we can um or we can send out a, a note to the group later but um I, I don't know the exact answer to that.
Right, thank you. All right. <clears throat> Ken, thank you for your feedback. Uh, thanks for your time today. Um, if there are any other questions, please feel free to grab, um, type them in today or right now, and we will answer them on the call today. Um, I think we're at the end of our questions. Hmm. Okay, Ken, I can follow up with you on mounting um, if you'd like. So you asked a specific question about mounting, and I know we just kind of just verbally went over it. We didn't have anything to throw on the screen at the at the moment. Um, I'll follow up with you. If anyone else have any, has any requests for follow up, um, Brian, you want to put your uh, contact info back on the screen? Did you have a contact info on the early slide? I think I I I, I did, but I can. Um, okay. I don't think I. Did, but but I can. It's it's Brian B R I A N dot Hakeem H A K E E M at snapav.com. Okay, and if if, you have, if anyone has any specific follow-up for me regarding the CDS, uh, CEU certification or anything like that, uh, my email is rick.murphy, M-U-R-P-H-Y, at allnetdistributing.com. And that's A-L-L-N-E-T, distributing.com. Uh, um, also, I just wanted to note that this presentation and all of our presentations are archived. So we record the we record these and we put them on the YouTube channel. And it's uh, youtube.com slash allnetdistributingu. Um, for now, we're all going to host them on the YouTube channel. Um, who knows what the future may hold? We might have a, more of a, a global um, archive for the webinars that were hosted on uh, by Volutone, by MRI Direct, by Custom Plus Distributing, and possibly even some of the Snap AV. Um, Snap does not like to archive and present their videos uh, that are on a publicly searchable area because they don't they don't sell to end users. They don't necessarily want to promote to end users. That's kind of our job and your job as integrators. So we don't, like when we have Arachnus, Luma, you know, any of the kind of technical trainings, we simply just don't post them publicly. So, but I think we, I think we will with the, the projection screen. So uh, Brian, any last words? No, I think, uh, you know, look forward to, again, you know, just want to remind everybody, you know, we want to give you choice, but also, uh, we want to help you make more money. So, you know, every, every time you're doing a your projector quote, local or anywhere, uh, please also look at Dragonfly because I think you'll find that quality is there and availability is definitely there and you'll put more money in your pocket as well. And I would welcome everyone to stop by your, your closest branch. Um, I know that all the Allnet locations have the uh, ultra thin, um, the, the ALR on display. We've got the 120 here on display i'm in troy michigan at the all net and um, i know all the other locations uh either do or will soon so if you would like to see the, the screen in action stop by your local branch and take a look at the take a look at the screen in person it's a good fit and finish and it's good it's a good product and the price points are just razor sharp so it's a good product and we're we're, we're proud to have it in our mix so brian thank you very much for your time today i'd like to thank everyone who's still on the call for joining us today so we're going to go ahead and wrap the call now thank you